first topic is about the definition salinity tolerance. According to Department of Water and Environmental Regulation of Australia, salinity refers to the concentration of salts in water or soils. For thousands of years, salinity has harmed irrigated agriculture, the capacity of a plant to withstand the effects of excess salts in the medium of plant development known as salt tolerance plays an important role in managing salt-affected lands in both irrigated and non-irrigated agriculture. Also, the stage of development of which salt stress is encountered has a significant impact on salt tolerance, although the evidence is insufficient to draw any conclusions. Many crops and plants do show increased tolerance as they grow older. While efforts have been made to advance the development of salt-tolerant crops, there are still many teething problems. Using barley, rice, pearl millet, maize, sorghum, alpalpa, and a variety of grass species, significant improvement in salt tolerance of important crop species have been achieved in the last two decades. Such accomplishments were based solely in phenotypic expression of the features in questions. The underlying physiological process that resulted in those salt-tolerant individuals were unknown. According to TJ Flowers of 2004, Cell salinity is a major factor that limits agricultural crop yields, jeopardizing agriculture's ability to support the growing human population. According to Magyo Hasegawa et al. 2001, yields are affected just slightly or not at all at low salt concentrations. Since most plants, glycopites including most crop plants, cannot grow in high concentrations of salt and are seriously inhibited or even killed too much salt. Yields decrease as concentrations rise. According to Armands and Termat of 1986, the explanation for this is that they are developed in low salinity environments and do not have salt tolerance. Halopites, on the other hand, can withstand salinities. Because of unique salt tolerance mechanism evolved during their phylogenetic adaptation, halopites are known to be able to grow on salinized soils of coastal and arid regions. According to Hasegawa et al. 2001, the high salinity has two key effects on plants. First one is that high salt concentrations in the soil interfere with roots' ability to absorb water, resulting in slower growth. This is referred to as the osmotic or water deficit effect of salinity. Second, high salt concentrations within the plant can be harmful, inhibiting many physiological and biochemical processes such as nutrient absorption and assimilation, since it will harm the cells in the transpiring leaves resulting in more growth reductions. This is known as the salinity's salt-specific or ion excess effect according to Greenway and Mons of 1980. These factors combined have a negative impact on plant growth, production, and survival. That's why all major processes such as germination, development, photosynthetic pigments and photosynthesis, water connection, nutrient imbalance, oxidative stress, and yield are affected by salt stress. Next topic is mechanisms and factors that affect salinity tolerance in plants. According to Mans and Tester in 2008, plants have evolved several mechanisms to adapt to salinity. There are three types of plant response or tolerance to salinity. First is tolerance to osmotic stress. Second is sodium exclusion from the leaf plates. And last is tissue tolerance. So let's discuss first Tolerance to osmotic stress. Tolerance to osmotic stress. The growth of salt stress plants is mostly limited by the osmotic effect of salinity. Uh, regardless of their capacity to exclude salt that results in reduced growth rates and stomatal conductance, 
Uh, in 2009, Rajan Ran, Tester, and Roy mentioned that osmotic tolerance involves the plant's ability to tolerate the drought aspect of solid stress and to maintain leaf expansion and stomatal conductance. This was demonstrated in a study of genetic variation in tolerance to osmotic stress on 50 international bloom varieties and land races by James, Von Kammerer, Candon, Zwart, and Mons in 2008. They found out that there was a positive relationship between stomatal conductance and relative growth rate in salt-rated plants, and that higher stomatal conductance is related to higher carbon dioxide assimilation rate. Hence, if the accumulation of salts overcomes the toxic concentrations, the old leaves die and the young leaves will no longer be supported by the export of photosynthesis. Thus, this will undergo a reduction of growth and new leaves production. For this reason, uh, increased osmotic tolerance involves an increased ability to continue production and growth of new and greater leaves and higher stomatal conductance. So in other words, uh, in order to gain osmotic tolerance, plants must undergo a reduction of growth and increase its ability to continue its production through producing newly adapted leaves with higher stomatal conductance. Next is sodium exclusion from leaf plates. Mons, Tester, Rajendran, and Roy agreed that exclusion and control of sodium ion is another essential mechanism of plant intolerance to salinity, which involves the ability to reduce the ionic stress on the plant by minimizing the amount of sodium that accumulates in the cytosol of cells, particularly those in transpiring leaves. This process involves up and down regulation of the expression of specific ion channels and transporters, allowing the control of sodium ion transport throughout the plant. So, uh, another mechanism of plant response to salinity is to exclude and control the amount of sodium from its leaf blades. Uh, if the plant failed uh, from the exclusion of sodium ion from its leaf blades, its toxic effect will exhibit after days or weeks and will cause premature death to older leaves. Lastly is tissue tolerance. Tissue tolerance requires an increase of survival of old leaves. It requires compartmentalization of sodium and chlorine ion at the cellular and intracellular level to avoid toxic concentrations within the cytoplasm, especially in mesophyll cells in the leaf, and synthesis and accumulation of compatible solutes within the cytoplasm. Compartmentalization of sodium and chlorine ion is important because it maintains osmotic balance. According to Ashraf and Fulan in 2007, osmotic tolerance plays an important role in plants, especially in protecting enzymes from denutrition, stabilizing membrane, or macromolecules, or playing adaptive roles in controlling osmotic adjustments. In addition, salt tolerance may vary considerably with genetic traits. A plant species tolerance for salinity will be overdriven by a sudden exposure to salinity, even if the species is halophyte. Different adaptive mechanisms may be involved in gradual accumulation of salinity in contrast to adjustment to a sudden shock. The sensitivity to salinity of a given species may change during ontogeny. Salinity tolerance may increase or decrease depending on the plant species and or environmental factors. For some species, salt sensitivity may be the greatest at germination, whereas for the other species, sensitivity may increase during reproduction. So, in conclusion, salinity tolerance involves interconnected responses at molecular, cellular, metabolic, physiological, and full plant levels. Extensive research through and physiological analysis has cleared that among various salinity responses, Mechanisms or strategies in controlling ion uptake, transport and balance, osmotic regulation, and stress signaling plays a critical role in plant adaption to salinity stress. Breeding salt-tolerant crops can be simply taught as selecting plants that can withstand salt stress most effectively. Unfortunately, the plant breeding approach to produce salt-tolerant crops has limitations. In general, the challenges in breeding salt-tolerant crops includes the limited sources of genes for salinity tolerance 
and the lack of rapid and precise evaluation method. Genetic resources for breeding have been typically selected from the best materials within the crop species. Unfortunately, limited resources or sources of genes for salinity tolerance still exist. In fact, according to Wang, Lin, and Kin 2020, it is difficult to obtain salt-tolerant varieties that can be used in the field production by the introduction of a single gene or several genes. Yet, it seems feasible to select the survivors or the plant that perform well from a crop grown in a saline environment and thus improve salt tolerance. Moreover, the choice of methodologies to screen for salt tolerance depends to some extent on the targeted production system as well as the crop itself. Lin et al. 2020 stated that using traditional breeding methods are time-consuming and not efficient. They also mentioned in their study that salt stress is one of the main environmental factors that affects rice growth and yield of rice in the worldwide. That's why improving the salt tolerance of rice will be an effective method to solve this problem. However, scientists claim that the mechanism of salt tolerance in rice is largely unclear using traditional breeding methods. On top of that, they also stated in their study that the phenotypic traits are typically used to evaluate the salt tolerance of rice varieties. However, it lacks comprehensiveness and accuracy. Thus, it may result in an assessment of salt tolerance that is not consistent with the actual performances in the field. Significance of plant breeding and developing salinity tolerant crops since all crop plants have physiological limits, breeding for salt-tolerant crops can be done through selecting crop species that can withstand salt stress most effectively. Of course, as a plant breeder, we want to choose and select crops that has the qualities and traits that we want. And in this case, we want to select crop species that can withstand salt stress since there are crop species that can adapt well in salinity while there are some that cannot. Salt tolerance can be improved in different ways. First is increasing the threshold level. This is somehow related to the physiological limit mentioned in the previous slide which means that this is the level where the crop can tolerate salinity without affecting its growth and development. Increasing the threshold level means increasing the salt tolerance of the crop. Second one is decreasing the sensitivity to salt beyond threshold. Which means that the threshold level will remain the same but the way how the plant reacts to the salt will be lowered. So that it will take time to reach the threshold level or it need to have a greater amount of salt present in soil in order to reach that threshold level. With this, we will be able to develop salt tolerant crops that does not reach threshold level quickly. Third one is improving yield level of salt tolerant cultivars since there are salt tolerant cultivars that may not perform well in terms of productivity. In that case, we should focus on increasing the yield since we already have the trait that we want which is the salt tolerance. Lastly is the transfer of salt tolerant genes to high yielding cultivars, which can be seen in the case of the researchers that use the wild relatives of tomatoes found in Galapagos Island that is believed to have salt tolerance since it grows near ocean water. They are trying to transfer that trait in the domesticated tomatoes that is grown for human consumption. In the case of Epstein and its co-workers, they were able to identify salt-tolerant cereals and tomatoes by growing them in salinized solution tanks in their entire life cycle. And after identifying the crop species that grow in the salinized solution tanks, they tested it on their natural conditions. They planted it in naturally saline soil and test which among them can survive and adapt well to the environment, which turns out that some of them was able to grow but some did not. This is still one of the challenges for plant breeders, which is 
on how to develop crops that are both salt tolerant and can produce high yield. By developing salt tolerant crops, we may increase the productivity in marginal lands, increase the types of crops that farmers can grow in salt affected area, and this could be useful where good quality of water is not available. Since developing salt tolerant crop means that we could be able to utilize seawater or diluted seawater as a source for irrigation.